What is going on, beautiful people? Welcome to another episode of The Narcissist Code. I am your favorite self-aware narcissist, Mr. Lee Hammock, better known as Mental Illness, across all social media platforms. If this is the first time seeing my face or hearing my voice, I am a diagnosed narcissist, and I use my platform to raise awareness for narcissistic personality disorder, get more people into therapy, and also help validate the victims and survivors of this disorder as well. Today's episode is going to be about becoming a self-aware narcissist. Do you really want a self-aware narcissist? How did I get to the point where I'm at right now? So if you're new here, I've been diagnosed with narcissistic personality disorder for years. I've been in psychotherapy since October of 2017 dealing with this. And yeah, I've been doing this. I've been on TikTok talking about this since about May of 2020. I've actually been doing a podcast since July of 2020, though. I mean, July of 2019. You can kind of scroll back. If you're listening to this on Anchor or Apple Music, you can scroll all the way back and see my old stuff. When I was talking, I was on some other stuff. I was, I was on some darkness back then, y'all. But this self-aware journey, y'all, I'm telling y'all, it is not for the faint of heart. Like, do you... So, so many people see think that they are dealing with narcissists or toxic people. And they see my stuff and they get the hope up. They get hope that that person can change or be better. And th this, this, that. There is such a small chance. The chances of a narcissistic person getting better or changing is infinitesimal. It's just so small, y'all. It's like crazy. It's crazy small. And even if they became aware, would that clear up the stuff that they put you through? Would that change anything that they put you through? The cheating, the lying, the manipulation, the gaslighting, the mental abuse, sometimes the physical abuse. Will that make it okay? I ask people that all the time. Like, you want a self-aware narcissist so bad, but does that make everything that they've done to you okay? Does this clean the slate? No, you're still going to feel, you're still going to remember everything that they put you through. I know effort is the new currency, but like, I feel like effort is the new currency and trying to, like, I'm just, <laughs> it's changed. It's like not even crypto. It's like one of those, you know, it's like one of those little baby cryptos and things like that. I just think people, when it comes to, you know, dealing with dealing with this personality disorder and battling through what I had to battle through and becoming, you know, like I said, becoming aware, like this has been a journey of over a decade. I tell people this all the time that I when I first started working, um, I worked at Blockbuster Video when I'm in my early 20s and I started joining network marketing companies. And no, I was not a good network marketer. I'm not good at MLMs because I, I don't like people, you know, what I mean? for the for the most part. I like the human mind and how it works. I just don't like most people. So when it comes to, you know, network marketing, the more thing that I feel like I gained from network marketing is actually the personal development that comes along with it. Because as soon as you join one of these companies, they give you like <laughs> they give you all these books to read about being a better person and being a better seller and learning how to become more ambitious and self, you know, personal development, being a better human being overall, just growing and developing and becoming better overall. So I've been doing that, you know, they can grow rich. You know, how to win friends and influence people. Tony Robbins stuff, Les Brown stuff, Gary Vaynerchuk, you know, um, Mr. T the 10X guy. Uh, I can't think of his name right now. It slips, it slips my mind. Grant Cardone. Slips my mind. Tony Robbins, like I said, E.T., the hip hop preacher. I've been on all these people for a long time. been reading so many books. So I've already been personally, like, becoming better mind-wise for a very long time. I've still been a narcissist the entire time, but I've, become, I've been working on my personal development for at least... Over it's been over a decade that I've been doing this. This has not been four years of therapy. This has been ten plus years of personal development, plus four years of therapy. So I've, I've already been ready to be, uh, receive change. To me, therapy is personal development. To me, therapy is power. Therapy is strength. Therapy is just like Tony Robbins to me. Pouring is pouring knowledge into myself to make myself a better human being overall and to contribute to the world. And, you know, like I said, and this is the part of my journey right here. It's just not therapy. It's also personal development. It's also reading and writing and going to school and doing activities to actually better myself before therapy. I wasn't even dealing with I wasn't even dealing with the narcissism. I was just dealing with the ambition at first. I was ambitious. I was like, I gotta become a better person to be a better to get more money, to be famous. I gotta become a better person overall. I gotta personally personally develop myself. By reading Tony Robbins, all these books, by binge watching Simon Sinek videos all day, you know, by doing all of this, by listening to Dr. Joe Dispenza, all on to this stuff, y'all, all on it. You know what I mean? All into it. I'm all in the personal development. So I've been all into this for years, y'all. Sorry. You, as you see the camera quality try, uh, <laughs> changed because my camera died again. I don't know why I don't plug it up at night. I'll be lazy sometimes. I'll be tired. But 
I've been in all this personal development stuff for years upon years, y'all. Like I just, I've been doing this before therapy. That's why I've been always ready to receive things and ideas that could possibly make me better. I want like, it's the ego. It's kind of the narcissistic personality disorder. The ego, the ego that comes along with it kicks into play in high gear because I don't like people telling me what I can't do. And I don't like, you know, when people, so you look up narcissistic personality disorder and they say the things that I can't do. What the hell? Who do you to tell me I can't do something? A lot of people come in my comment section like, you can't love, you can't care about your kid. You can't do this. You can't do that. I'm like, again, who are you to tell me what I can't do? You know, I'm just like, <laughs> I'm a narcissist. Like, I don't, my ego is huge, y'all. Yeah, it, 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 it takes a, a it takes a few shots to the chest sometimes, but like, it's still a big ego. You know, and I tell people this all the time. I'm just like, do you want your narcissist to become self-aware? Because self-awareness does not mean cured. I think people see me and how I talk. This is, like I said, this is not just four years of therapy. This is 10 plus years, this is almost 15 years of working on who I am, plus the therapy. The therapy is just the icing on the cake, the cherry on top. That's what this is, that's what therapy is for me. Because I was already on this pathway anyway. And then not alone, not just that, I also read the Bible. The Bible was the best book I've ever read. And no, I wouldn't consider myself a Christian. I'm very, very spiritual. I pray, pray to God every night. I thank God for every day. You know what I mean? I'm very, I read the entire Bible. And that, the best the best book I've ever read. It changed my life for the better. So the Bible, to me, is also the, the you know, the top of personal development. Because I read that thing got uh got so much got so much from it learned so much from it and then you know i pray to god every night i i read the quran i know people uh, some of the people the christian folks when i tell them i read the quran they immediately get mad they're like how why did you read that book why did you read that why did you read it brother you're not a real christian of course i'm not a real christian i said it at the beginning um uh, but i'm very very spiritual i pray to god do you know what I mean because i just feel like you know religion is tainted because people teach religion you know what I mean the people who te the people who teach religion are easily a lot of them are easily swayed by money, selfish needs, and things of that nature. So yeah, you know, I'd rather listen to it on my own and get my own perspective on it as opposed to get a, a swindling, cheating pastor. Sometimes they did does that type of stuff. You know what I mean? A judgmental pastor or minister or something like that. Because you get to do some of the, we're not, not going to make this a religious episode, y'all. So we're going to swing back into the self awareness. So I ask, like I said, again, I always ask people, like, is self-awareness enough for you, though? With that person, that narcissistic person that you've been dealing with, with them being becoming self-aware, would that change anything that you've been through? Would that make your mind feel better? Would that put you at ease? I know some people say, I just want them to do it for the kids. I want, I want them to do it for them. I can work on myself because not only does that narcissist need to go to therapy, you need to go to therapy, too. Because you've been dealing with this for so long, you need to go to therapy to process what you've been through. I don't think people understand that. They, they just think one person needs to go to therapy. Like, like that narcissist of mine, you need them to go to therapy. No, you need to go too. You need to go too. Not, maybe not together because without solo therapy, marriage counseling, it, it just doesn't work. Not with a narcissist, not with a toxic person that's not trying to listen to it. That's not trying to hear it. Marriage counseling does not work with people like that. I just, you know, I'm just like, I'm not afraid to tell you this. I need to tell you this because I need to understand this. I just need to get them to marriage counseling. Why? So you can have two people against you because they're going to turn the marriage counselor against you because the marriage counselor, if they're not well-versed in narcissism or dealing with narcissists, they're going to just say, your, your biggest issue is communication. Like, duh. Have you tried communicating with them better? Yes. Why do you think we're here? That'd be paying somebody to tell you stuff you already know. That's which is silly. And then they'll tell you that too. Like, And then if you go in there and you be honest with the therapist and tell them what you, what, whatever your husband or wife has been putting you through, this will make for a terrible ride home. I can guarantee you that. You're gonna have an awful ride home. It'd be an awkward car ride home. Maybe some rage. Maybe the silent treatment. That's why I said, like, is self awareness enough, y'all? Is it enough? Ask yourself that question. I know you're in love. I know love is, uh, y'all, I'm in love, though. Lee, you don't know what love feels like because you're a narcissist. But love, it, it make you feel good. Cool. Love make you feel good. Love also puts y'all in so much pain and hurt and tumult. Just pain, hurt, and just, I'll be watching y'all. I'll listen to y'all. I talk to people on Zoom every single day that are going through pain and hurt and suffering. I talk to not only just non -nar I talk to narcissistic people. I talk to toxic people. I talk to victims. I talk to survivors. And I also talk to clinicians and therapists. Yeah, I've, talked to, I've had so many appointments with doctorates. They say doctor so-and-so on my Zoom. Doctor so-and-so dealing with a narcissist. 
that doesn't want them to become self-aware. There's some sometimes the therapists are codependent people and they can help you help guide you through the stuff, but they can't get through it themselves. Which is not to me it's not funny. It does it makes sense to me because I understand the dynamics of how the human mind works and things of that nature. I understand now. And as I say, I'm I'm so good at doing these Zoom calls right now because like I've I've studied people and I listen to people. And not only does this personal development help me, it helps me help you. It helps me help other people. That's why I talk the way I talk. Like praying to God. I look, I went live on Instagram last night with well, one of my friends from high school. I'm praying to God it downloads on my computer so I can upload it onto YouTube so y'all can see it because I had two good live sessions. I'm starting a live show on my YouTube channel. So if you listen to my podcast only on Anchor or Apple Music or Spotify or wherever you listen to my podcast, um, join, follow the YouTube channel. I'm starting my live show. I'm going to show y'all what I can do because like I said, as soon as these videos post, they're, they're going to download. I'm, I have faith that they're going to download. And I'm going to be able to show y'all what I do and how I talk to people on Zoom and things like that. So y'all can, can see live. I'm going to be doing live pretty much Pretty much my talk, my show is going to be just live one-on-ones with people who are comfortable sharing their story. I'm going to share my story, give my point of view, give my uh, and just give my perspectives to people. Because I feel like y'all got to understand that like, if you're going to remain in a relationship with a narcissist, you're going to have to go through some pitfalls. It's going to hurt. It's going to, you're going to scrape your knee. You're going to scrape your brain. It's going to hurt. Like, what is, is it worth it? I just feel like, ask yourself, even if they get healed, is it worth it? And I feel like that's, a, that's that's one of the questions you have to ask yourself. Even if this person goes to therapy, is it worth it? They put me through so much. And then if they do go to therapy, they're going to want cookies and roses every time they come home from therapy. Babe, I just had a great therapy appointment. I feel good. I'm healed. Like, aren't you happy? You were over there crying because they cussed you out last night. Good for you, honey. I love you. You know, what are you going to do? Literally. You got to take back your power. You got to stand in your strength and stand in your faith, y'all. Because I know if you're religious, stand in your faith. Sometimes faith tells you to leave. Faith don't tell you to stay all the time. You know, faith, but God told me to stay with the God didn't tell you that. <laughs> so, God, somebody, <laughs> y'all be watching my live talk sometimes. People come in there and uh, they just ask me crazy questions. Not crazy questions, but they be funny. Y'all got to catch my live. Because somebody asked me the other day, like, do you know, like, the, the comment came through and said, do you know Jesus? And they don't say, uh, yeah, that's the comment said. The comment said, do you know Jesus? And I was like, well, not personally. I mean, I don't have his number saved in my phone. We don't text that night. You know, I pray to him. Yeah. <laughs> I made myself laugh with that with y'all. But y'all, I truly hope this video resonates with you. If you're a narcissistic person, listen to this video. Go to therapy. Get some help. Make your life better because, yo, know, you have, if you make your life better, you make the people around you lives better as well. Stand in your strength. I really appreciate y'all. Mental illness is out again. Peace.